Hello, hello everybody, this is TipTopMTG here today with another Magic the Gathering video. In today's video, we are breaking down all of the spoilers that have come out for Kaldheim today, today being December 15th. So today is the first day of spoilers, we kinda got some information about it yesterday, and it looks like for the today and tomorrow we're gonna be getting a few spoilers coming out, and then after that we're gonna have to go on a little bit of break until I believe January 7th. So today and tomorrow I will be doing videos covering the spoilers that come out, and then I will do spoilers videos every day that spoilers come out starting at January 7th, I thought I'd mention that before we jump in. Um, we don't have a lot of spoilers today, and a lot of the bulk of them are things we already knew that were happening. However, we do have some interesting tidbits that kind of show more about the set, and so I'm going to talk a little bit about those as we get into this. So, why don't we jump right into this? The first card is Showdown of the Skalds. It's a four-cost Boros enchantment saga, and it says, Exile the top four cards of your library until the next turn, until the end of your next turn, you may play those cards. So you're drawing four for four, but you can only use them for a turn. And I would say that's really good. Um, obviously, drawing four for four is pretty good. Honestly, this is a very aggressive card. I mean, yes, so you're paying one mana per card. I don't know many blue spells that let you just pay one mana per card. So just like a four mana blue spell that draws four cards. I know they're probably out there, but and I know like Ancestral Recall, but... If we're talking about modern cards, this is really aggressive, especially for being in red and white. Now, the fact that it gives you until your next turn is, I think, what makes this so incredibly, uh, kind of almost color pie breaking. Because if it was just this turn, it wouldn't be su a super big deal. Because say you were to p draw a four drop, right? You would have needed eight mana to both play this spell and get the eight drop. But the fact that this is a four mana kind of draw four and that's not it there are there's other text on this card it says whenever you cast a spell this turn put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control which obviously if you exiled the top four cards of your library there's a much higher chance you'll be able to cast a spell i don't really think those saga that saga part's really going to be the reason it's played i think this is going to be a kind of four cost uh, almost instant effect on an enchantment that just has that little bit of a boost and i think if you're running a boros deck this is honestly a pretty good contender for it i mean four cards four mana pretty powerful now why is this such an exciting spoiler first off boros getting more card draw that's pretty cool but it is a saga and unless you didn't notice sagas are not in every set so this is kind of the confirmation of our first um uh, kind of mechanic and that is going to be saga so we last saw them in theros and before that they originated in dominaria and it's kind of weird because in the past they said they really liked doing sagas on planes we've already been to as they let us explore as they let them explore stories that may already be known because sagas are supposed to be like legends like you know tales from the past they kind of brought forward and so going to a new plane and doing sagas according to them was very difficult now um Obviously, that is not mean. That does not mean they have to not only do it on returning planes. I think it probably makes a lot of sense here, especially saying a lot of the Nordic stuff is already known, even if it's not magic, uh, known to magic yet. It is kind of interesting to see. It just it's a little bit of an interesting design philosophy. Um, and it is also in the January slot. Last year we had Theros with Sagas in the January slot. Here we have this as well. So it's been about a year. It'll boost up, I believe, the enchantment theme from Theros. Um, and yeah, I, I'm a big fan of sagas and would honestly not hate it if they became part of every set. So yeah, generally I enjoy sagas. I'm excited to get more of them as we see things for like commander. You know, the more sagas you get, the more likely you can make a saga deck. So yeah, I'm excited for that. I want to know what you guys think about sagas returning in the comments down below. Next, we have Pyre of Heroes. It's a two-cost artifact, and it says, Pay two, tap, and sack a creature. Search your library for a creature card that shares a creature type with the sacrifice creature and has converted mana cost equal to one, plus that creature's converted mana cost. Put that card onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. Activate this ability only any time you could cast a sorcery. So, here's kind of what this does. It is a card called Birthing Pod, which allowed you to pay, I believe it was a green Phyrexian mana, and tap it, which means that you could pay either one green or two life. And you sack a creature, and you search your library for a creature with CMC 1 plus the amount of the sacrifice creature, and put it on the battlefield. This is that card, minus the Phyrexian mana, and it has to share a creature type, which means this can do some very powerful combo-y things. However, it is a lot less so, because you 
you do have to find things that, you know, share a type. Now, uh, with, like, shapeshifters, this is pretty cool, and we have some confirmation that one of the planeswalkers can kind of change uh, materials and forms around, and I wonder if we're going to see other people being able to do that and inheriting multiple creature types and then that works well with this i really hope not but um it, it's interesting to see i know in uh historic right now we have a combo using neoform and so i believe that's the card and so i would be interested to see what all the creature types are and if there was some replacement that could use this effect as well either way i think in a tribal deck this works really well you can take say your two mana so you have an elf two mana when it enters the battlefield look at the top card of your library it's a land put it on the battlefield well it's cool when it etbs but then it's kind of useless so then you sack your two mana elf for your three mana elf and then boom that does some cool effect you can sack it later uh i think this is going to work really well in creature heavy tribal decks so yeah, those are the two main cards. Now we also have the pathways. So we have the Simic pathway. Sorry for the uh, um, subtitles. They were part of the video, so they're going to be on the card. But you, c how these work, these are modal double-faced cards because this is the first video in the spoiler season. I will explain this. Essentially, what, how these work is that you can play either side. They're going to be a double-faced card. So on the card, there will not be a back that says Magic the Gathering. And unlike normal double-faced cards, where you play one side of it and then it transforms into the other, this one you get to choose which side enters the battlefield. And so that'll be, you know, you can either play it as kind of a forest or as an a island. And I know a lot of people don't think these are good lands. I think, you know, they are in standard at the moment considerably better than basics uh, outside of the fact that they can't be fetched with Fabled Passage. So I think basics are still needed, but these are better than basics. In older formats where fetch lands are much more prevalent, I don't know how well these are going to do, and obviously we've seen the ones from Zendikar, they are simply filling out the cycle with the Rakdos ones, the Golgari ones, and the Azorius ones. Um, now, one thing I want to mention is, yes, those are the color combinations of Kaldheim. However, I wouldn't look too much into them. Um, yes, I do think it may matter, but they have stated that Zendikar kind of got the first pick. So Zendikar chose the six that were relevant to it and then left Kaldheim with the four. So unless they designed the mechanics and the color combinations around the lands, uh, I wouldn't necessarily look too much into those mana colors for, like, stuff that's coming in now they could have seen the four that they had and designed around that but just note zendikar is the one who got to kind of choose the land that fit best with its themes so yeah that is going to do it for this video uh it was a definitely an interesting one stay tuned for tomorrow's video where i talk about everything they reveal tomorrow it looks like it'll be a little bit more than today although we did get some exciting things today we got the kind of new birthing pod we have the confirmation of sagas returning and of course the reminder that modal double face cards will be in the set either way if you enjoyed hit that like button again let me know what you guys think about all this in the comments down below and i will see you guys in the next one bye